Uh, so okay. this is going to be on concepts in Supremo, and I'm here with my friend Ebs, and uh, he's going to be helping me intro this. So first, we're going to introduce some of the idea of like what concepts are, how they work, and then we're going to show you how to actually use them. Um, so Abs, we'll, we'll start. Okay, hello everyone. This is Abs. Um, so for the purpose of this presentation is to understand the meaning of the, the term concept uh, in Supermemo. Uh, we'll uh, define it. Uh, okay, so we'll define it. Uh, we'll explain their uses. Uh, there's also this um, to-do list, a uh, to-do concept, um, which hopefully Raj will explain to you um, on their use. Uh, it is also explained in the manual. Um, and then we also learn uh, about how to organize your knowledge uh, using concepts. And that will include how to create them, how to create uh, separate templates for separate concepts and make that make SuperMemo automatically apply these templates um, to the relevant concepts. Uh, so we'll start off um, what are concepts? So they, you can think of it as a high level branch or like a, a super folder, uh, which includes, uh, which holds like a major domain, idea, topic, or subject. So as you can see here on the left hand side, we've got this massive language concept and it includes Spanish, Arabic, Japanese, um, like these are the smaller concepts. Um, so elements such as items, topics, and of course, as you can see here, other concepts can be also added to them. So we've got this green one, this is a topic, uh, which is passive knowledge. And then we've got the uh, blue one, which is an item, and that is your Q&A or your closed deletions. So why are they useful? Here are just a couple of reasons. There are plenty more on the uh, SuperMemo manual. Uh, they're good to structure your knowledge in, in the tree into separate folders. Uh, in this case, they're the concepts. Um, so, if, for example, imagine if you've got a uh, Q questions, questions and answers about chemistry and geography in the same folder. Okay, Th this is like having a ring binder containing sheets of knowledge about the capital of Spain and that compound over here, which I can't remember what it was. Um, it doesn't, so, it's not, it's not very, it's not nice. It doesn't look. Um, one, uh, one thing I would add is uh, basically if you have say a separate chemistry concept and a separate geography concept, uh, one of the big benefits is that you can basically change the current hook, which I'll explain later. So that when you're adding new stuff, it just goes to that specific concept or that when you're importing, you can uh, make something go to a specific folder. So while aesthetically it is sort of nice, um, the, the big reason long-term that it's useful to have it separated out a bit more cleanly is for neural review. So I won't get too deep into neural review, um, but I'll, I'll, I should lay enough groundwork in this video that you should be able to set up something not terrible for using it eventually. But yeah, yeah continue. Um, so yeah, as we said, we, you can make SuperMemo automatically um, apply templates so you can have your geography cards or uh, questions and answers as green and japanese as pink without having to keep applying templates and uh, now it's for the practical um so raj would you like to sure. share your screen or yeah all right um so when it comes to concepts probably the first thing you want to figure out is uh how do you make a concept so i've already got two concepts here but uh, let's say that I want to make a concept and my concept is going to be about incremental writing, right? So I want to make it so that I have myself a real fancy incremental writing template. I want all the stuff I add to it to have, uh, well, to, well, I want all my incremental writing stuff to go to this concept too. Um, and if I do a bit of neural review, then I might want to connect some of the stuff within here uh, for a bit of extra inspiration. So now there are two ways that you can create a concept. Now the first one is you can just right click, do concept create, or if you want to be fancy, which I like to be, you can just do control K and just press enter and I'll just make it, whoops, I don't know what I did there. Ah, I do know what I did there. Yep. And just like that, I have a concept. 
So now that I have a concept, um, let's say that I press Alt N, which creates a new topic. You can see that it adds it all here. Or if I do Alt A, it also adds it to here. Now, essentially the way it works is that SuperMO has um, what we call as the current set concept. So right now the current default is set to the incremental writing concept. So anything I add will go to the hook of this. So basically um, for concepts, we have a hook, right? So a hook is when this is set, which folder will it add new things to? So obviously it makes sense to add it to this because this is the incremental writing concept, right? To add it directly into this root. But what I could also set it to do is I can change this and set this as the hook, right? Now, uh, if I span all send a bit, then you can see that it goes to this new hook instead. Um, so basically I can change it to whatever I want. I can change it to something completely outside of uh, what I was looking at anyways. And if I do some alt ending, then it goes here as well. Um, so that's the first thing. Now let's say that I want to change what my current concept is. So make sure you have Windows hints on enabled, by the way, for this. It'll be a bit easier. So you want to just click here and then search for the concept you want. So let's say SuperMO. So I don't know what most of these buttons do, but this one's the main one you're going to want to use is Anchor. So when I click the anchor, you can see that it changed the default concept. So now if I uh, press Alt-A, then it'll go here. Uh, and that's that's pretty darn useful. So that's like the basics of um, how to make concepts and like what you can use them for for organization. Uh, one other thing I'd like to add is if you do Control-Shift-A, uh, you can also choose which concept group that it gets imported into. Um, yeah, that, that's around the basics for, for organiz organizing stuff with concepts. Now, the other thing about concepts is that you can use them to define, uh, say, templates and priorities. So for me, incremental writing, let's say that incremental writing is a not that important. To, it's a 70, right? And if I do this and I press well, I accept and I do Alt A, you'll see that it gave it a 70%. Doesn't think it's very important. Um, no, wait, let me <laughs> fix the hook. And uh, alongside that, something else you can also do is define a separate topic template. So uh, what I could do is, here, let me just make a new concept real quick. Or not a new concept, a new template. I'll just change the color. And I'll make it bright yellow for incremental writing, because that's what I associate with writing, yellow. Now, uh, let me save this as a new template. and go back to the concept menu and topic template okay it, pretend that it didn't also change the default template to yellow um but now that i've done that if i do alt n then you can see that it makes it also yellow because i changed the default uh template here um so that's the basics for that much so just one sec okay back um so some other stuff that i'll just quickly get into is um let's say that you want to move stuff between concepts so let's say that i do alt n and um i'm writing about super Emo is really great and for some reason this is not incremental writing this goes in this darn super Emo concept and it's just horrifying me that it's just in the wrong place what do i do about that now you have uh, two options so the first one is uh, Control Shift P Alt G, which I will show shortly, and I have another video on that. Um, but other one, and the easier one, if you want to press buttons, though it's slower, it's slower because it uses buttons, um, is just type in the other concept, press this button, and it moves it. Obviously, this is a horrible, horrible strategy because it takes forever, and no one wants to use a cursed mouse. So if we press Control Shift P, we'll get element parameters, and if you press Alt G using Windows Access Modifier keys, then it takes us to this group thing, right? And uh, now if I press enter on SuperMemo, well, okay, it's already SuperMemo. Whoops. Let's say that I try to move to incremental writing. Then, uh, yeah, it moved it, right? So that's pretty simple. Now let's say that this horrifying group of concepts does not belong here. Then what do you do? So if you want to move a subset, um, this is a little bit messier. 
So there is a weird thing about Supremo for moving stuff to different concepts, which is that let's say that um, I have this. I can like apply the, a concept to all of these. So I can say make these all part of the video concept, but I won't move it. Or I can move this to here, but it won't change the concept group. So my recommendation is that if you want to say move something and apply a new concept group to a say branch of things, um, my recommendation is that you can either just straight up drag it to the place. You can do shift control V. Um, so that's shift control V. Or you can right click and do process branch and then do move. And after doing that, my recommend, well, okay. Yeah, so if you want to move something and add it to a different concept, yeah, you want to move it first. And then after moving it, uh, you'll notice that it, if you just move something to a different hierarchy, it doesn't actually change the concept group. So what you wanna do is press control space. And this opens up subset view. After you do this, you can click on this button. So the second to top left mouse button, and you can do set concept group, and you can do say videos, and then do yes. And the uh, the structure will stay intact, but the concept group will have changed. Now the reason that you can't just straight up do right click, process branch, move to concept, um, is that it will move it, but it won't apply the concept to any of the children other than the root. Um, the reason that you can't do control space subset view, um, move to con move all of them to a concept, is that you actually can, but it has a trade off that it totally and utterly butters the parent child hierarchy, which can be a pain in a lot of cases. So that's that's basically it for moving stuff uh, to different concept groups. If you have questions? Let me know. Um, Two other things, well, okay. First, one other thing I'll go into is to-do concepts. So some of you might have noticed that Waz has a to-do concept in his collection. So the re like basically the way I view um, how Waz organizes his collection is something that you guys could try to, is he has a to-do branch and uh, he then has a processed branch from what I can tell. And if I make these two concepts, what I think Waz likes to do is, whoops, just a sec, um, is let me find something to import. And uh, basically what he does is when he does imports, he will select all the things. He will do to, to do branch and then close browser. And basically what he does is he'll import stuff as a temporary stopgap. He'll just import everything to here. And then uh, as he goes through it, then over time, he'll incrementally move it to a process branch. So you might have say, um, whoops. a sub process or sub learn thing where when he's finished processing it, he might just move the entire process thing to here incrementally. So personally, what I like to do for a to do concept is I like to import everything to a concept just called import. Um, and I don't actually move stuff. Um, but I, like, if you want to, then you could just do some of the stuff I've showed you earlier. And I think it's fairly good idea. Um, now, the reason that we actually bother, though, to move stuff into the right branch is mainly for one purpose, and that purpose is neural review. Um, so for those of you that don't know what neural review is, I'll leave a link in the description to what it is. I am not proficient enough to be able to explain it, but the idea of neural review is, uh, let's say that I have, well, let me, let me just actually, uh, no, that'll take too long. So let's say that I have uh, 10 different articles here. Or actually, let's say I have 100 different articles because you need to have a fair bit of stuff before it becomes useful. And then I press, say, Control F2. Um, okay. Basically, what it'll do 
is it'll take me between things and they'll be semantically related. Um, now you can see that this order is random and these are like all pending items. So it's not in like some super intelligent order. But the benefit of neural review is that it will take you through things that are semantically related. Um, and the end benefit of that is that you end up coming up with a bunch of ideas. Now the thing about it though, is that neural review depends on uh, your how your concepts are structured. Basically, it looks at semantic relationships uh, based on how, say how close something is um, in distance, say in the hierarchy, or if it's in the same concept and that kind of thing. So if you, if you organize stuff into neater concepts, long-term it can be helpful for that. Um, so I won't go into exactly how to use it in this video, but hopefully a future one will cover that. Um, but yeah. So if you have any questions about concepts or there's anything that you wanted to see but was not covered here, feel free to let me know and uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thanks for watching.